All right. Uh, shall we kick it off, Shannon? What do you think? Absolutely. Great. All right. Well, I think it's nine o'clock Pacific time. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, wherever you are. We're super excited to be here, like every Thursday morning, Shannon and I, to talk about crisis leadership. These are short 20-minute conversations that we all can get on with our day. Last week, we talked about transparency and the need for sometimes radical transparency. Today, we're going to talk about purpose. My name's Urs König. I've been a student of leadership for most of my life, first as an Army Reserve Officer, much more recently as a UN and NATO military peacekeeper, as a business executive, executive coach, and as a, somebody who competes in long, crazy endurance events. I'm joined like every Thursday by Shannon. Shannon, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks, Urs. This has been the highlight of my week every week, and it is especially this week for what we're about to talk about. But my name is Shannon Huffman Polson. I am a keynote speaker and author, uh, most recently of The Grit Factor, which isn't actually recent because it will be published September 8th from Harvard Business Review Press. I'm also the founder of The Grit Institute, which is an online leadership development platform. And, uh, and I am just thrilled to be here. I come from a background of Army aviation, one of the first women to fly the Apache helicopters in the US Army, and then transitioned through an MBA and spent time in the corporate world as well. So like ORS, I have a life long love of leadership and the study of leadership and it is truly a pleasure to be with you ors every week and with all of you who have joined us great so as you can tell don't mess with shannon right so uh, <laughs> don't mess with ors <laughs> great so let's dive in purpose so in a crisis like we're facing right now we absolutely have to lead with purpose we can't control there's so much out of our control so we ought to lead with a absolute clarity around our purpose. Because we have to delegate and empower more, and we'll talk about that later on, we need to provide our teams a clarity of purpose, a clarity of direction. And the way I think about purpose, it's like a compass showing true north for everybody in the organization to know that's the direction we're going versus providing people with a detailed map on how to get there. So the, the purpose truly is the compass showing true north. Just a quick example out of the life sciences. Despite of all the bad news we're reading and hearing right now, there's some good stuff happening there. So what's the true purpose of businesses in the life sciences? It's yes to make money, yes to produce drugs, but it's actually saving lives. And so there is now good old Swiss companies like Roche and Novartis collaborating with governments, with, uh, with each other, to come up with a vaccine and even giving away supplies. So that's sort of purpose, sort of showing up at its best. And Shannon, you have a very cool way to think about how we might arrive at purpose. You take Simon Sinek's why a step further. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, and Urs, I love how you talked about the importance of purpose, especially in a time of crisis, because right now we're, we're very decentralized, much more so than, than normal. Uh, we're working remotely, whether or not we were used to working remotely before, and most of us weren't. Uh, we're working in a way where we have less contact because of that remote nature. And at the same time, there's both a lot of personal and professional uncertainty, and that's very unsettling. It's even frightening, for, frankly, for a lot of people. And so I, it's absolutely critical at this time, and we've talked about this relative to transparency last week as well, for a leader to be able to show people not just the direction, but the real connection to why it is that they're doing what they're doing, right? A real connection to purpose. And that's something that helps us navigate and anchor, anchor and navigate through this fear and uncertainty. So the way that I'd like to think about this, and this is really twofold, because I think as individuals, again, we're working from our remote offices, from our homes, from our closets in some cases, if you're in a big city. And, uh, and we have to do the work first to connect to our individual purposes. And I think this is a great opportunity in this time right now that is so uncertain, where things are so volatile and so fluid, is to really do the work to drill down to what drives us. And that's the first step I think that we have to take. And we always want to give you tactical giveaways or tactical takeaways in these, uh, in these Thursday morning sessions. 
So doing that work, I like where Simon Sinek starts and where philosophers have started for, for, for hundreds of years, which is to ask the question, why? Right? Ask yourself why. But I don't think that why goes nearly far enough. And when I work with companies across industries, across the world, literally, we talk about really drilling down to what I have always called core purpose. And this is individual work now. This is not yet the organization's work. I think sometimes asking why gets us to that organizational level, but not to the individual level. But right now we're in a time where we've got to address our own uncertainties, our own fears, before we're able to really give our all to our work. And to do that, I like to suggest that we borrow a technique from Toyota now, this is a manufacturing technique, but we're going to use it here for the purpose of drilling down to core purpose. And that is asking why not one time, but five times. Now, this is a technique that Toyota developed to drill down to the root cause of a deficiency. So putting that aside, outstanding manufacturing technique, all of the Six Sigmas will know all about it. Let's use that to drill down to what it is that truly drives us. And that gets down to a level where we're really looking at our own values and the things that are most important to us. And Ors and I were talking yesterday and came across um, some interesting research that in the wake of the Great Depression, in the wake of 9-11, other worldwide global crises, there was a, a real reassessment by a number of people, by most of us, where we started to, to, to look at what really mattered, to reprioritize what really mattered. And this is the opportunity we have in a time like this to start with our individual purpose and to drill down to what really drives us. So asking the question, why five times? Right? Five times, that's right. And you know, I can give you an example. I, I used to work in a, um, I was working in this, this very, I found it a little depressing because when I first was assigned to the 229th Attack Aviation Regiment at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I was a young lieutenant. I was ready to fly the Apache. I was ready to lead. And I was assigned to be the assistant to the assistant S3, which was a staff job, not just a staff job, but a staff job kind of in that back corner where I took the work people had done during the day and then did it starting at six o'clock at night in many cases. And I remember I, I did the best job I could and I went to the captain I worked for and he looked at me and he said, listen, Lieutenant, the army doesn't owe you anything. Uh, <laughs> and then, then went to, uh, later to the major that I worked for and said, listen, sir, I think I can do more. And he gave me more to work on and I made sure that I hit all of it out of the park. Um, but it, in the course of that year, when I really wanted to be flying, I really thought it was actually a little unfair that I was stuck in this staff job. If I had asked myself why, why am I there? I would have arrived at that organizational level answer. I was there to, to, to be an aviation leader, to fly the Apache helicopter. Why? Well, because I'd, I'd been trained to do so. Why? Because I'd asked for and earned that opportunity. Why? Because I wanted to serve my country. That's pretty good, right? But forcing yourself to drill down to that fifth why, why? Because I wanted to serve. So service, the concept of service was something that has been part of my life since I was a child. It's how I was raised. And so if I could hold on to that concept of service, I could get through anything. And that's what I think we have the opportunity to do in this time is drilling down to that core purpose that drives us and holding on to that as an anchor which allows us then to be able to navigate the storm. And I'm coming back, Shannon, to what something we've talked about early on. Let's not let this crisis go to waste. So this is an opportunity for us as everything gets shaken up to really do some deep diving work here and drill down to our core purpose by asking the five whys. So that's what I'm, what I'm hearing you say here. Uh, if I, I just tag on, so this is the deep dive, right? Chan is talking about maybe not a quick hack, just to think about purpose, is asking and answering this question. What's the one thing I or we need to do extraordinary well around here in order to win? That's right. What's the one thing? And so uh, maybe taking half an hour with your team and talking about that will be valuable on many levels because you understand where your team is coming from. But so it doesn't have to be the purpose, um, uh, or coming up with a purpose doesn't have to be a all drawn out vision, mission, values workshop. It can be asking ourselves that question and said, you know, that pose it's provide great customer service. Costco, lowest price possible. I have one client who did this exercise and he cheated a little bit. He came back with three purposes. It's keep my people safe add value to our clients, and then most importantly, or 
equally importantly, learn from this crisis, learn something. So that's not a quick hack to think about the, how we might arrive at purpose, much less of a deep dive what Chen is describing, but something that we can do relatively quickly and walk away with something. And Oris, I love how you're saying that because it isn't, there, isn't a, there isn't one way to do this. There's not one exercise to do. It's a great starting point. And I've had also clients ask, well, hey, I think I have more than five whys. What if I, what if I can keep drilling down? And I say, great. Uh, what if you have more than one purpose? Great. Um, try not to have more than about three, I think, right? In terms of focusing in a time when things are uncertain. But absolutely, it's really using, starting with that framework and then seeing how that framework can work for you in this time is, is really important. The other thing I like that you just brought up, Oris, is that we start with our own individual purpose for sure, and then it's about connecting it to the organizational purpose, right? So start with our own work and then connect that to the organizational purpose. And we've got to do that for our employees as well, for the people that we work with, the people that work for us, is help them do their own work and then connect that work to the purpose of the organization, especially in this time where things are so uncertain. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about why we actually need to delegate and empower more during a time of crisis. And I'll just kick it off here and then I'll have you chime in, Jen. So there is sort of two ways I think about this. The first one is, and Jen keeps talking about this, our first responsibility as leader is to take care of our people. So one of the reasons why we delegate and empower is because our people feel out of control. There is so much beyond our control that we absolutely have to give our people some sense of ownership and give them some discrete projects that they can execute on so that they have a sense of control again. So, and ownership. So that's number one. Number two, of course, is that it's driven by the environment itself. When in a crisis, things change by the hour, certainly by the day, most certainly by the week, there's often not time for people to feed the question of the chain of command on your chart and wait for response back. They need to execute independently with a clear purpose, the true compass in mind at the front lines. Just a quick book I absolutely love around this is General McChrystal, Team of Teams. So he talks about the importance of empowering at the front lines and how he built, rebuilt a task force fighting terror in the Middle East around that concept. So those two things are truly important and why we need to delegate and empower. I love that. And I'm going to just take, because you brought up the crystal, we're both going to give you a book recommendation uh, in this 20 minute session here. But uh, in the military, we talk about commander's intent and that allows a decentralization. Uh, now there's a lot of there's a lot of discussion on whether or not that actually works that way in, in many cases. But the intent is that by giving a commander's intent, you allow people to maneuver within the space that accomplishes that intent, which is really looking at, hey, here's the purpose. But or it's the other thing that you bring up is why is it so important to delegate? Um, one of the things I think we, you and I were both talking about, and I've had this example in teams that I've led, and, and I know that you've had a client with a similar experience, is when people are feeling uncertain, or sometimes when some, I actually had this example when there was a, uh, somebody that was working for me that was, challenging, I will say, to, to some other folks. And when you give that person a task, something for which they're responsible, something for which they're able to and expected to take ownership, that often is a great way to give some locus of control, to pass some of that over. And that can actually be an anchor for that person to be able to get through that uncertainty. So it's a way to help somebody that is on your team that might feel particularly unsettled, um, or in a different circumstance, might be a little bit of a challenge uh, to give them a chance to shine uh, or not, uh, but to really give them that opportunity. And I think that is that, that opportunity to give control within the context of a greater purpose. And that is just so important and, and really a great opportunity for our teams. Right, absolutely. So I'm gonna make a revelation right now. So the beauty of working from home is that people walk in on you. So somebody just walked into my office. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, 
work very hard on uh, trying to refocus here. So uh, <laughs> I apologize for being a bit scattered right there. But well, that's what the reality is right now for many of us, right? Oh my goodness, so much so, absolutely. I think I was uh, explaining something about first grade math just before signing on. So <laughs> there we go. But you know, Orz, I'll, I'll let me refocus just uh, to, on the concept of purpose as well, just because I want to make sure in this chat that I also can recommend a book that I'm just getting started on and I could not be more excited about. And this is truly about the concept of purpose. This is a, a brand new book that's out now by Scott Kaufman. It's called Transcend, um, The New Science of Self-Actualization. And the, the, the theory behind this is really that purpose is the top of Maslow's hierarchy. And he actually talks quite a bit about Maslow in this book and, and is re-examining some of the assumptions that we've made. But, uh, but really the concept of purpose is so important. It's literally critical to our well-being. And when we're focusing on how we get through times of crisis, whatever that time might be, whether it's now or whether it's in the future during an M&A or during a reorg, it's, some, it's something that we have to be able to come back to that, that inside and say, what is that thing that truly drives us? What is that thing towards which the organization is truly working? And the idea that I love about this book, that's and hence the title Transcend, is that that every person who is self-actualized without exception, Maslow would say, is working towards something bigger than themselves, something outside themselves and something bigger than themselves. And you know, fear causes us to come inside ourselves and we get ourselves into this little bundle of, of, of concerns and, uh, and, and fear. And looking and working towards something outside ourselves that's bigger than ourselves, I think really allows ourselves to pull out of that place of uncertainty and fear and be focused on something that is, um, is, is meaningful. So. Right, and the, so the sense of belonging. Shannon, who's the author? Can you- uh, Yeah, this is Scott Hoffman, who also is the creator of the Psychology Podcast, it turns out. So yeah, right. go, go, go find the book, find him, and maybe we should all have a book club on this uh, because I, I've just got this, just received this, and would love to, love to talk more about it for sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So uh, um, I think we can slowly wrap it up, Shannon. Is there anything else uh, before I close that, uh, that you make, want to make sure that you mention around purpose? You know, I think as you and I were giving examples to each other back and forth as uh, getting ready for this conversation this morning, one of my favorite examples that I recalled was, uh, was the example of and I'm, you have to forgive me if I get this slightly wrong, but the janitor that was working for NASA during the work to push towards landing on the moon. And, uh, and when the question was asked, um, what are you working on? He was there late at night, mopping the floors. You know, why are you here? Why are you here doing this work so late at night, mopping the floors? And he said, well, because we're going to the moon. So it wasn't about mopping the floors. It wasn't about the specifics of what he was doing then. It was because we were going to the moon. And that's what purpose lets us do is transcend our circumstances, transcend, right? And work towards the bigger good. And that's just an incredible opportunity that we have today and every day. This is something I know we're both passionate about. So the janitor really connected his or her purpose to the purpose of the mission. And maybe that is, so I'm helping to put the man on the moon, right? I'm up in the floor. And so maybe that could be our takeaway for today, like this morning, this afternoon. Let's spend a minute reflecting on our purpose and maybe use the five whys that Chance talked about or maybe the quick hack around the one thing we need to do really well. My purpose and how it connects to my team. And my team can be my family. It could be the non -for profit board I'm sitting on. It could be my team at work or the big organization. The mission is going to the moon, maybe it's very big. How does my purpose connect to the bigger purpose of my team and my organization. Spend some time today reflecting on that. Great to see you all. We look forward to catching up with everybody next Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Stay healthy, stay safe. Take care.